Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. We are your prescription for change. Let's kick it off and go with Rose. Hi, Rose. Yes. Hello. How can I help, darling? Oh, uh, I'm calling about my father. Uh, he's 75 years old, and he's having a lot of uh, vascular problems. Okay. He's had six amputations. And every time he gets an amputation, his skin starts dying around the amputation, and I'll have to go and scrape it. Hmm. And All right. Well, now, his, obviously, does he have diabetes? He has vascular disease, diabetes, and uh, he's had heart failure. Okay. Now... What all has he changed? Has he made any major changes in his life? It, talk to me a little bit about his lifestyle, what he does now. I mean, if he's losing, you know, the different, what has he lost limb-wise? And, or, or talk to me a little bit about that. Okay. Where, um, is it, where is he at? Give me his status so I can get a good picture. Okay. It started off with a toe, and it took his toe off. And Which then they toe? Had to take like... Which toe? Um, it was a... A middle toe, I believe, okay. a middle toe, and then it spread, and then they had to take off three toes, and then they took off his ankle, and then they took up to his kneecap, and then it started down the other foot, and they've got, so far he's up to both above his knees right now. Okay. And I was wondering if there's anything I could do to, to help his skin grow back healthy. Well, as far as his skin growing back healthy, there's... There's not a lot you can do as far as this regard because his art, the, the challenge is is that he he's in a place where the diabetes is playing a pretty big role. He's got the he's got the devascularization due to the vascular disease and he's had heart failure. So he's got a lot of chips against him. The one thing he can start doing more than anything is to change the way that he eats, watching the nutrition that he puts in his body. Supplements can be helpful. But, I mean, again, this is not going to create drastic change, but at least it can be some things that he can start working on. Because it's better to start at least working on some things that you know can help. But just know that he's things have already gotten to a pretty tough place. But I know what you're saying is you don't want it getting worse, right? That's kind of what you're you're shooting for, is that you don't want it to get any worse. And so for the skin to become healthy and for the skin to get better, you just have to start doing things like omega-3 fatty acids. You have to start working on those. Anything that supports skin health is going to be helpful. Silica is, is really great, and you can get all that sort of thing in a health food store. Um, but as far as the nutrition goes, plenty of lean quality proteins, very important. I'd cut out any type of inflammatory type food that would be would, would hinder any type of digestion process because as you do that, you're going to increase the body's ability to make good new healthy cells. And at the end of the day, that's going to be the key for him because even though he's in a tough spot, at least he can be proactive about his health. But obviously if he has diabetes and he's struggling with getting over heart failure, those sorts of things. I mean, that is a challenge within itself. It is. But I would encourage you, as you're working with his physicians, to make sure that you come up with a good nutritional game plan. And, and that includes eating plenty of foods, lean quality proteins, low glycemic carbohydrates, cutting out the grains and the starches and whatnot. And some people would say, well, my gosh, he's already had portions of his limbs amputated. Let the guy eat whatever he wants to. And, and there are some people that have that attitude. I don't. Simply because I believe that our health is a gift, and whatever we do with our health is our gift of giving back at whatever stage in life we're in or whatever stage of a health challenge that we're in. You should never give up, and you should always come up with a game plan. Now, depending on what his doctors say, vitamin C has really good reputation for helping with skin, hair, and nails as well and building those. And I'm not saying take a high dose of it. I'm just saying make sure that either he's getting it from his foods or you know, some form that he can get it from. Whole food source is always the best. And if he's got to do supplements, make sure it's at least a natural-based supplement of some kind. And if you go to a good health food store, they, they can walk you through 
all that sort of thing. But silica or silicon, they, they make supplements like that. And for years, that's been known to produce healthy skin, healthy hair, healthy nails, that sort of thing. And as he's getting blood work done in the middle of all this, you know, there's a lot he can do. I mean, he's in, in a fight right now. And the last thing he needs to do is just kind of sit back and give up. I know you know that, but he needs to know that. And you need to tell him that as far as being his cheerleader in the middle of it all. Um, the biggest thing I would focus on, if I were you, if this was me, is doing whatever exercise he can. You're thinking, well, he's lost both legs. Well, it doesn't matter. Because they make actual bikes that you can use with the arms, the upper body. They use it a lot of times to strengthen rotator cuff. They use it a lot of times in physical therapy. You can go to a physical therapy uh, based on a referral from his physician, and he can start doing some upper body exercise that will increase vascular flow if he can handle that. I don't know at what level he's at if they would okay that or not. Making these choices makes a difference. And if you need some good websites to go to, you know, you can go to lifestyleresearch.org is a good website to get some help. Uh, also, Mercola is a good website to check out. There's some good websites to get good information regarding that. But at the end of the day, he's got to make the, the best choices for him. And you helping him by getting information is good, but he has to make the changes. And that's what I would encourage him to do. There's not a silver bullet if you're asking me for skin growth. There are some things that can help, but it's more about coming up with an overall plan that will enable and empower his body to regenerate the good new healthy cells in the middle of what he's dealing with and to fight the body and help do anything he can to help support pancre- the pancreas, to do anything he can regarding that will be his greatest help. Triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two. Check us out on the web. Let's go to Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Hello. How can I help, darling? Um, my husband, his toenails are really um, thick and yellow and kind of flaky, and he's tried several over-the-counter treatments, and they don't really work. He's, his latest thing is putting bleach on him, and it's sort of helping, but I just wondered if there was something else he should be doing. Yeah, have you, has he done any any drug by his physician like Nystatin? Has he done any type of antifungal, anti yeast related no, he medication? Has not. So just over the counter, right? Yeah, Lamisil, right. that sort of thing. Yeah, 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 those sort of things. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's he's got two options. Okay. Now you can get pretty aggressive after the toenail fungus, which is what he has. Uh, sounds like it anyway. You can get pretty aggressive. Nystatin is a really good medication. A lot of physicians will recommend and it's it's a pretty short based treatment but it has pretty it has great results to it for some people the others you can go more of a natural route for toenail fungus and that involves using ionic silver echinacea there are some different components that will help with that as well it's a lengthier process i'll mention that to you in just a moment when we come out of this break If you're looking for increased strength, increased endurance, and better recovery, then look no further than an all-natural nutritional supplement called creatine hydrochloride. Concrete is the brand, and it's the most absorbable form of creatine hydrochloride found today. Now, creatine is not just for athletes. You've probably heard that before, but concrete, creatine hydrochloride, is for the everyday person looking to improve their health. Listen, I started taking creatine in college when I was a strength conditioning coach at Florida State University. And I've taken it ever since my college years. And it's made a massive difference in my life. Everything in my body, I believe, is functioning better because of creatine. Creatine hydrochloride I've moved over to using concrete. And it is the best form of creatine on the market. Concrete creatine hydrochloride is available at most Walmart stores and on Walmart.com or any store that carries nutritional supplements. Just make sure to look for concrete brand creatine hydrochloride and watch your endurance your strength and your recovery and your immune system get boosted today to find out more connect with on call radio online at inchapenetwork.com
with Erin. She was talking about her husband's toenails, dealing with toenail fungus, really, is what's going on. And she's they've tried some over-the-counter medications. They haven't really worked. And we were talking about going into something deeper. A lot of physicians will recommend something like Nystatin, uh, typically, if they want to go for yeast infection, potentially. And, and sometimes with fungal-related infections as well. So here's the deal. You can go that route. There's a natural route you can go to. There's some pretty good research on it and some results people have seen with echinacea and ionic silver. You soak it. Remember, any type of fungal-type issue in the body, you have to tackle it typically from the outside as well as the inside, from the gut. Probiotics can be helpful, too. There's some good research behind that. So those are some components that you might want to look into. But the ionic silver and echinacea... They actually put it in a warm liquid, and you soak the soak the toenail in it. And there's some different ways to look at that. And a lot of health food stores will have those uh, kind of some instructions on how to do that and whatnot. But you've got to tackle it from the inside too, and that you know that means getting the gut flora in a healthy state. And a lot of there's a lot of ways to do that. Probiotics are really really beneficial. Using enzymes or a betaine hydrochloride when he's eating his meals, can be very helpful too. But again, wormwood and black walnut are two from an internal perspective in more of the natural world. If you want to look at more herbal formulas and all that, that can tend to be helpful. So you, you might want to look into that. Uh, they, they, there's been people that have said that's really good results with both of those. Just be careful when you look at those. Look at the brands. And make sure you read the labels and all that sort of thing if, if you're going to do your own research. Because with black walnut, wormwood, those types of antifungal type herbal formulas, if you will, if you look at all the standard text on dosages and all that, you have to cycle those, they say, in a lot of the books like the PDR guide, which is a standard guide, will tell you that it's better to cycle those. Like, like when I say that, it's, it's taking them seven days on and seven days off or 14 days on, you have to look at that. And again, the people in the health food stores will be able to guide you in that process. But if that doesn't work, if you want to go that natural route, if you're thinking about that, just keep this in mind. Again, I'm just the guy to give you information. So keep this in mind that if that doesn't work, there are medications that your primary care physician can give you that are not really, I mean, when you think about, I know everybody's worried about side effects, but they do work and they can knock things out fairly quickly uh, and you can kind of get back onto it. The toenail fungus can be a real challenge, and it can linger for a long time. Some people have a really, really tough time getting rid of that. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, some of the natural things can work, and like I said, they work for some people. Some they don't. All right, thanks for the call. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. The memory of teens might be affected by binge drinking. Now, I know that teenagers don't drink. I know this is something that... <laughs> that they don't do, of course, it's something that they do. It's widely known, binge drinking. Kids in college, it goes hand in hand. Well, they found now that it affects the brains of teenagers. A new study shows that the long hangover can wear off, but the binge drinking impairs the working spatial memory of teenagers. Girls especially are more vulnerable to these effects, they said. The spatial working memory is the ability to perceive the space around you Remember and work with this information to perform a certain task, such as using a map or playing sports or driving a car. And so one study found that female teenage heavy drinkers had less brain activation in several brain regions than female non-drinking teens when doing the same spatial task. So the researchers Susan F. Tappert, acting chief of psychology at the Virginia San Diego or the VA San Diego Healthcare System, in a news release, she said the differences in brain activity were linked to worse performance on other measures of attention and working memory ability. So this study was published in Alcoholism, which was a clinic and experimental research journal. But they said that heavy alcohol use could interrupt normal brain cell growth during adolescence, particularly in the frontal brain regions, which could interfere with the teen's ability to perform in school and sports and can have a long-lasting effect even months after the teen uses. And, again, teens are drinking alcohol. We know that. It's one of the biggest points in in life that, that kids or teenagers, later teens, hopefully, start drinking in the college years. And they get the hangovers and whatnot. And you know, learning that the, it does affect memory is challenging. Now, what it does affect is more so acetylcholine, which is our brain chemical, our number one brain chemical that affects memory. 
So, again, I mean, I don't want to get on a soapbox about drinking alcohol and that sort of thing and, and getting hammered or drunk with all your buddies. But, again, it does. It affects memory, and they're proving that. And there's no free lunch. Whatever you do that's harmful to the body in some aspect, you're, there, there's consequences all the way, every time. So if you eat poorly over a long period of time and you get cancer in your 50s, you can't sit there and go, gee, I wonder how I got cancer. Or you can't sit there and go, I don't know how I had a heart attack at 45 when you've been eating horrible and you're 50 pounds overweight for the last 15 years. You just can't, you, you can't ask those questions. So if you drink all the time and then your memory starts to fade or you smoke pot all the time and your memory starts to fade and you don't know why and you feel like I just am not as sharp as I was two years ago, well, you got to think about that. It's... Again, I had a great professor tell me one time there's no free lunch, and that's true. It's not. You will pay a price. So, and this is a great example. But again, the, the challenge is you can't tell you can't tell teenagers it's going to affect. No one cares if it affects your memory. That's the challenging part. It's only after they get into their late, you know, later twenties and thirties, and they start getting these kind of issues that it becomes a challenge and it becomes something that they're overly concerned about. But memory can be enhanced if you build up acetylcholine in the body. So if you've gone through this, let me give you just a, a an up on this, is that if you have gone through times of binge drinking, you feel like your memory is decreasing, a lot of things you can do to raise acetylcholine, eggs, fish, chicken, beef, and also the hard cheeses can raise acetylcholine levels. But also there's some supplements that can be helpful. Phosphatidylcholine, very helpful. Lecithin can be helpful. Vitamin B5 also, galantamine and huperzine, which is called club moss. All those can be very beneficial in your overall memory. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Food allergies, we talk about them. Hay fever, getting into that season, people are getting more concerned about it. You know this, firstborn children, this is kind of a neat study, firstborn children may be more likely to suffer from certain types of allergies, finds a new study. The Japanese researchers surveyed parents of more than 13,000 children, aged 7 to 15, and found that a child's birth order did not seem to affect the prevalence of asthma or eczema. However, firstborn children were more likely to have hay fever, pink eye, due to allergy and food allergies. In fact, the investigators found the prevalence of food allergy was 4% in firstborn children, 3.5% in secondborn children, and 2.6% for children born later. It has been established that individuals with increased birth order have a smaller risk of allergy. However, the significance of the effect may differ by allergic diseases. The first author of the study, Dr. Akunasaki of the Pediatrics Department of the Medical Center for Children at the Kodio University, both in Japan, explained that in a news release from the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, that the study was scheduled for presentation this past Sunday at an annual meeting for the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology held in San Francisco. But further research is needed to learn more about how birth order affects allergy risk. The colleagues concluded, says experts noted that the research presented at the meetings has not been subject to the same type of rigorous scrutiny given to research published in peer-reviewed medical journals here in the States. But it's interesting. It's interesting to see how certain health challenges, certain conditions, especially with allergies, are affected genetically by maybe firstborns versus middle children or the babies of the family. So it would be interesting to see the kind of research that comes out around that because allergies are something that affects so many people. I think really if we can learn about more of the root cause and getting the body to break down proteins better, which will cut down on the release of histamine, which is really the culprit of allergies and why we struggle with them so much. I think it, within that will lie the true reason of why there's such a struggle and cutting down on 
histamine, increasing the absorption of proteins and the breaking down of proteins, that's where everything truly lies for us to be able to get well, stay well, and live well. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. We've got our food for the day coming up. You don't want to miss that. Let's go now to Laura. Hi, Laura. Hello. How can I help you? Um, can, can you hear me? I hope so. Okay. Yes, I can. Oh, good. Um, well, I called tonight because I've been uh, struggling with uh, bioidentical hormones. I had a hysterectomy, complete hysterectomy uh, in 2003. And so just have had, you know, issues with night sweats and chills and that kind of thing. But lately I've had a lot of nausea and bloating. Um, and when I had my hysterectomy, I also had um, a tummy tuck, and I've had two C-sections. And so having some issues now with bowel changing and um, went to the doctor, a different doctor today, and she said I shouldn't be on progesterone because I don't have a uterus, and my other doctor totally disagreed. And so anyway, now I'm having issues, and they're thinking maybe scar tissue is causing obstruction or some kind of problems with my organs. So is there anything I can do, help, you know, nutritionally to avoid any other surgeries, if that's Yeah, there's I a need. lot. There's a lot you can do nutritionally. What, are they just telling you that not to, I mean, there's nothing, they're not suggesting anything for you, your physicians? Uh, the one I went to today said get off the progesterone for a couple of weeks, take Prilosec and, and see if your symptoms go away. But if you end up starting vomiting or cramping to basically get to the ER right away. <laughs> Oh gosh. Yeah. Well, isn't that nice? Well, it's it's when you've got when you, first of all when you've had a, a hysterectomy and you and you're dealing with all the challenges that go along with that. There are a lot of supplementation type things you can do to get your body to kind of balance out. There's food choices you can make that will help your endocrine system, your hormone system, and one of those. Is making sure that you're getting plenty of fats in your diet. Do you eat healthy? Give me a little bit of background on you as far as your eating plan and, and kind of your lifestyle habits. Okay. Um, I eat healthy. I mean, I'll have a smoothie, protein smoothie in the morning. Sometimes I'll throw spinach in it or oatmeal. Lunch is typically a salad and some kind of protein. And dinner, again, would be some kind of protein, vegetable, and starch. Uh, I drink a lot of water. I don't drink pop. I don't drink juices. Um, what else? I mean, I work out probably three times a week. I play tennis again. I mean, I'm 50 years old. I'm 5'4", and I weigh 126. So yeah, I'm so you're, pretty thin. Got it. I got and it. And fit. Yeah. Well, okay, so... I'm not hearing a lot of fats in your diet. Is that right? I didn't hear a lot of that. Protein, well, I'll starch, eat pizza. vegetable. <laughs> I, that's hey. my, my downfall. Right. I mean, I'll eat pizza. I, I try How to I... stay away from cheese and dairy. I don't do dairy for the most part other than cheese on pizza. Okay, let's talk about this for just a moment. How many <laughs> tablespoons of cod liver oil are you taking a week? Um, actually, we take a form of a fish oil, and I probably get two tablespoons, two or three tablespoons a week. So pretty much at every meal, you need to be eating some fat and probably with some snacks in between, like a handful of nuts. Those kind of snacks will make a huge difference in it because you have at least 30% fat in your diet to keep things balanced within the body, meaning to make sure that your hormones are balanced out, that they're going to be working at the highest level that they can work. And, you know, that you're not shortchanging yourself. If you cut your fat down down to 10 15% of your diet, your hormones are going to begin to shut down. And they're not going to be working to their best level, and that's not going to be good for anyone. You have to have those hormones working so they can function at that peak level. So just something to think about. That is a, and, and when I see and talk to anybody about hormones, wh- whether it's a guy or a girl, that's the first thing you go, you've got to look at. You've always got to look at the first things first within the diet plan. Always look at, you know, when you, when it gets down to it, always look at how you're doing things. And you want to make sure that you're eating the right kind of foods, making the right kind of choices, making the right kind of decisions. 
supplements that are beneficial, wild yam root, very good, helps with kind of mimic progesterone levels, and, and black cohosh is good for mimicking estrogen levels. But again, you want to if your doctor has you on bioidenticals in any level, then you know you can't do the supplements. I wouldn't do the supplements and that. You're if you do, you're going to want to make sure you're with them, and you got that whole game plan down, and you're working with them on a good level. Just a couple of things to think about. All right, but just know this: your body can change. Even though you've had a complete hysterectomy, seen too many women talk to too many women that have gone through it, and if your eating gets right, your exercise and all that, your lifestyle sounds great. But getting the fat levels up, looking into supplementation, especially the foundational four, that's that's what everybody needs to be on on a regular basis. It's a good whole food multivitamin, digestive enzymes, cod liver oil, probiotics, all four of those. So critical, so important. And it just gives the body back what it, it needs. It gives the body what you're not really going to get from our food supply. So keep me posted on how things go. And make some of those changes in your diet. See what happens. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. You're listening to the Best in Healthy Talk Radio. Let's go to Jim now. Hi, Jim. How are you doing, sir? Living well. What's up? How can I help? Uh, well, as you were talking about earlier, uh, a friend of mine has got, I'm just trying to help a friend, and a friend of mine has got uh, been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and uh, you are anyway, and she's a sweetheart and you know super healthy, about six foot tall, uh, um, in perfect shape, uh, probably about 38 years old, and she's you know been diagnosed with this, and she's taken the you know the the common medicines that they prescribe you, and so on and so forth, and I was just was, you know, asked her if she had heard of your show and if she knew anything about, you know, your show and, and what you suggest and what is there anything you sh- could suggest uh, for, for her to take that might, you know, turn the corner or, or help her out or ease, you know. She's not suffering from what I can see now, but she's talking in 10 years she could be, you know, that one would have to carry her around type situation. Um so it could be very serious uh, down the road. So is is there any kind of plan or anything that you could suggest? And I'll yeah, there is. Here. There is. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis is an, not only an inflammatory condition, but it's autoimmune, which is where the body attacks itself. And that's a real challenge because, I mean, here you are. She's trying to live healthy, probably trying to do the right thing, and her immune system constantly is attacking the joints causing them to disfigure and whatnot. The anti-inflammatory diet that I, that I wrote in my book, Empowering Your Health, that is a real key because it's going to cut down inflammation in the body, set her body up to where it can function at a higher level, and it really, really is something that could be a blessing to her. And I would encourage you to get her, maybe to get a copy of that, start following that. Now, the other thing is to figure out which one of the T helper cells are being more active in the autoimmune process and the way to figure that out is by a simple self test at home using green tea and echinacea tea one of those teas when you drink about five cups a day for a couple of days is going to flare it up and one's going to make it feel better figure out which one that is and keep me posted she can always shoot me an email obviously if she starts feeling really bad you want to stop that one but the autoimmune one of those factors are affecting the other and if you can figure out which one it is then you can settle things down you can't ever quit it can't ever stop it, but you can get things to settle down a bit and slow the process. Are you ready to chow? It's time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, It's convenient. Just put quality keto chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto chow tastes amazing. So make keto chow easy for you and your family today with keto chow. Let's go chow. Visit keto chow online at ketochow.xyz. That's ketochow.xyz.
connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at Triple A two eight three seventy two seventy two. Check us out on the web. Let's kick it off and go with Chris. Hi, Chris. Thanks for taking my phone call. Absolutely, man. How can I help? Yeah, I had a question in regards to gluten. Um, I was wondering if I was if there's any way to know if your intolerance uh, to gluten, um, other than getting a blood test done at the hospital, and mm-hmm. if I am um, gluten intolerant. Is it okay to take barley powder or barley supplements, uh, the green grass? Well, you can. I mean, the barley supplements are okay. I mean, it's super green formulas, or green food, green drinks. They're all fine. I mean, it just depends on what it's made from and, and the different products because there's only four components that re- or four grains that don't have gluten in them, rice flour, hemp flour, buckwheat flour, and then also the, um, the, buck- so the buckwheat flour, rice flour, hemp flour, and the coconut flour, those are the four. And so you got to look at the green drinks, what they're made out of, and making sure that they have the right ingredients. Of course, they can say gluten-free, but I would still check and, and see the grains that they were taken from at whatever level and whatever capacity they're made. Okay, The barley greens are really good. And the super green formulas are really good. The kelp that they use, a lot of those are really good. So, I mean, it just depends on the brand. Okay, Now, here's the key. With gluten, the antigliadin blood test is fairly accurate. But a lot of times, it's really only taken for people to show if you're dealing with something like um, one of the major challenges. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this right here. I'm a big fan of doing food elimination. Because if you're celiac or not is, is always the question people pose to me. They really do. They, they say, well, you know, I, I'm not celiac, so I should be able to eat gluten. And it's kind of frustrating. I guess that's why I'm sitting here with you and, and talking about this because gluten is, I think, from the research that I've done recently, especially in the last, oh, I'd say, couple of years, I've really noticed a big trend in a lot of the research that's headed toward a lot of the brain chemistry, the ability for gluten to go in, cross the blood-brain barrier, and change DNA. And that's in someone that's only sensitive, not in someone that is intolerant because there's a big difference. And... What we're finding with gluten is everything from ADHD, meaning that it can lead to these types of conditions. ADHD, we're seeing that it can cause some major issues such as any of the brain chemistry related issues, depression, anxiety, bipolar. You can see it with chronic inflammatory, autoimmune disease, chronic fatigue. You can see it with allergies. You can see it with environmental sensitivities, infections, Lyme's disease. You can see it a player in MS and Parkinson's. So, I mean, it is a major, major player with a lot of the health challenges that we're seeing today. And the challenges are pretty phenomenal. However, the, the victories that can come from just eliminating that out of your diet is unbelievable. And that's why you're seeing, even at all the grocery stores now, everything from your traditional grocery store down to, of course, the specialty ones like Green Life or Earth Fair or Trader Joe's or Whole Foods. I mean, all of those have always had the gluten-free items. But you're seeing, even in a small little town, you're seeing gluten-free pop up. And not just because there's people with celiac. Okay? You're, you're seeing that because... They're catching onto the bandwagon. It is a major issue. And you're going to see that more healthcare practitioners, more physicians are going to start pushing people being gluten free because of what it will do to your overall health. And it will impact you by avoiding it. And there's so many alternatives now. That's what the great thing for me is. I, I just, in the clinical setting for so long, we've gone gluten free completely. And have seen amazing results just from that one fact alone. And you can see really good results with it simply without a blood test to find out if you are, if you want to do that. You just eliminate the foods that have gluten in it. But here's the key. It takes seven and a half weeks for gluten to get out of the system. So you got to think about it. It comes in grains, yes, but it also is hidden in a lot of sauces. So you have to be really careful with the condiments and whatnot that you put on your foods, whether you go to a restaurant or you eat at home. But controlling that is 
a bear within itself. So it's a little bit challenging. You want to be careful with that. But if you want to go gluten-free, if you're looking at that, if you want to say, hey, I just want to see how I feel. I have yet, whether it was through my book that people have read or it was through an, the massive amount of emails that we get through the radio show and tele- television broadcasts that we do, whatever it is, I, I tend to get so much response from people that said, you know, I, I, I did this one thing. I eliminated gluten from my diet just from listening to you or from reading something you wrote. And my life was absolutely changed. Seriously. And it's not that I did anything. I'm just providing information. But when someone takes action for their own health and action for their own life, that's when everything changes. And that's, that's to me, that's the exciting part. The exciting part of this is to see someone go from being tired, being fatigued, being in a place where they don't feel like they're at optimal health and making some small changes in their life to go to the next level. To me, that's what's exciting. To see go, someone go from where they are to where they need to be. And you know, that's what the show's all about. But gluten itself, the blood test is good. Sometimes it's not mm, the best and most accurate. However, it's pretty powerful. And it's one of those aha moments that when you get it and of course there's all kinds of books out on gluten now that I encourage you to read gluten for dummies I mean there's all kinds of little books booklets at that but once you get it I mean once you've done it once you've gone gluten free for seven and a half to eight weeks the way that you feel is unbelievable your energy levels go up your mental clarity if you have allergy type symptoms how they go away digestive issues gone bloating gas all those sorts of things joint pain it sounds crazy but it's true and it works amazing thanks so much for the call puts another hour in the charts i'd like to thank a producer jay patrick leslie pardue john garrison and the rest of the team go tell one person something you learned on this show and together we can change the health of our friends our families and our communities you're listening to the best in healthy talk radio Did you know you could listen to the asa rx audio experience on spotify and pandora for all the ways to watch and listen Check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.